Hey everybody, it's Dr. Sandy. I am just so excited. <laughs> ah, it's been too long, y'all. So let me uh, turn this down because, you know, I'm still always goofy with my electronics. I want to know how everybody's doing out there. So it's been a while since I've been doing, have done any webinars. Um, and there's a good reason why. I have been finishing up my program. As you can see, Stella's excited too. She's behind me. As you can see, my credentials have changed. I'm now a nurse practitioner, but a psychiatric nurse practitioner. So I want to first and foremost celebrate the fact that I finally made through the program through COVID, through everything. And I know there's other nurses that are out there that have just pushed themselves to the limit to try to finish, trying to finish and conquering their programs, whether it be registered nurse, LPN, you know, nurse practitioners, DMPs that have to do clinical hours. You guys, I'm not gonna forget my masters, you know, the master's program and the BSN programs out there that do require clinical hours. It has been horrible with clinical hours. So I want to say that I made it and I know other people have made it and we need to celebrate each other. So if you just finished a program, I wanna see you in the comments right now and tell me that you made it through this program because that is a huge challenge and an accomplishment and you are amazing, you did it. With that being said, Nurses Against Violence Unite is becoming even stronger. We are going to be launching programs to help nurses to talk off of Facebook and to keep their, their identity private if their employer is on there or whatever, that they could talk and they could start to release some of this built up, this, this horrible feelings that they've been feeling like they've been isolated, that they are not you know, being heard. So I am, I have been working on an assignment as a registered nurse while waiting to take my boards. I have been working in an emergency room and in the psych psychiatric area where we have very acute psychiatric patients that have been coming in. As some of you know, and some of you don't know that we have the first behavior prevention program out there. And I have been putting it to the test. Now I have been put to the test with some of these people that have been coming in and it has been difficult to a degree, but also seeing, but I have to say the positives that I've been seeing. Yes, the ER nurses, they like the specialty to go into the specialty. But we also have to identify the fact that we too are hurting and we need to uplift each other the best that we can. What I have noticed is pure strength. I have witnessed pure strength within my nursing, within my nursing uh, folks that I've been working with. Resilience, people that will do whatever it takes, whether taking, it, taking the patient to me, Dr. Sandy, or even listening to what I have to say when it, when it comes to what is going on with this patient. Doctors listening to what I, have, what I have to say, and I don't know everything, but I do know this. If we just have a little patience within ourselves to understand that sometimes we don't have patience because some of the people, even myself included, some of the patients that come in will try you and they remind you that we are human, that we can too fly off the handle and we too can also become like one of the patients. Again, we're not perfect. None of us are perfect. And that's what's so wonderful about what we do as nursing professionals. We recognize that we're not perfect. But we also need to understand that everybody that we take care of, everybody, the mask is what we see. What's underneath is, is crumbling. That includes us because we are two patients as well. We don't want to say that we're a psych patient, but more times than not, and you're seeing more and more in the newspapers, you're seeing more of it with your staffing. 
you're seeing more of the things that I have been talking about since day one and that I've been fearing the most of how nurses are just leaving. Now we're talking about pole dancing. Now, nothing cracks me up more than hearing something like that because we have way too much in, uh, uh, education. We have too much personality, maybe a, a stand-up comedian or you know, but pole dancing, come on, 60 year old nurses getting up there. Come on, we could do better than that. It is still funny to think about it, but I have to say, when it comes down to it, every person that I have encountered in this process and have taken the behavior prevention program and have put it to the test for myself, I have noticed that nurses do want to listen. They don't connect the dots when it comes to what protocols are available to them to help them identify the symptoms that maybe somebody, if they're agitated and you can't figure it out, maybe it has something to do with addiction. Now, we also need to understand addiction within ourselves, right? So nurses like to have their mimosas. Nurses like to go out and drink. Nurses can party, right? So can CNAs, so could doctors, so could firefighters and EMTs. We have to identify how far are we doing it in moderation because we're patients too, right? It is very important to identify that our population that we work with can also be us walking amongst each other. Now, when I say this, it is not to down our profession because we have the strongest nurses are the backbone of healthcare. Now, one of the releases that I have found that has helped very much with helping me to be able to work with what I have, and that is called the advocacy release. Standing up and saying enough's enough to talk about the problems and not stopping until they get fixed. Now, you too can join me in this adv advocacy release where nurses were born to be heard. We we're born to advocate for our patients. Now let's advocate for ourselves. If something is not right, we need to find out the answers and we fix it, not complain about it. We fix it. We come from nuns. Our history with nurses is pretty fierce with the loving touch. I want you to take in consideration what we have inside, that little bit of strength that we have inside, to start talking amongst each other, start talking about how you can support somebody else that you work with. Talking about how you, if you need support, you can always contact me, right? You can message me. Let's talk about the problem so we can make the better happen within our profession. So I'm gonna be having like a, a life coaching in most states. I am now an ARNP. I am a psychiatric mental health nurse practitioner. And this has been, this is stemmed, Nurses Against Violence Unite stemmed from my doctoral project that I started in October, 2017. And it has grown, we are international and people watch us. And it's not a matter of trying to get money from people or, it is a matter of being heard because we are entitled to be able to have that voice. That's what we do. And we need to be heard without being retaliated against. So growing within my field since I was, in, since I was 16 years old, this is something that I felt that I had to do. So Nurses Against Violence Unite, has taken the person that stayed in the corner that is silent and that is afraid to take a talk about their story and has helped them talk about their story and to share it with so many others that it might affect, that might help them start talking about it amongst themselves and to others. And then the trickling effect to what we're seeing today. Whether it has anything to do with the staffing, whether it has anything to do with anything other than stopping the violence in healthcare, period. That includes incivility, that's amongst each other. That includes the patients beating the pulp out of nurses, punching them, coughing on them when they have COVID, this is, which, which is a felony in some states, just so you know. They could go straight to jail. I want you to know that there are other things out there 
besides the emergency room, besides being a direct admission. I'm going from topic to topic because there's a lot of things that we need to address. Did you know that there's an infirmary in jail? Did you know that these patients that decide that they're going to commit a crime and punch you in the face, you know, when you make a report, you're actually telling them that it is enough, that you're standing your ground, that you're filing a report, and then it is our job to talk to the lawyers and the judges and to talk to them about why it's necessary to see this person through with these charges. There's laws out there that say that because of somebody is mentally incapacitated that they should not hold any charges. Well, how about the habitual offender that refuses to get help? There's holes in policies, guys, and I'm telling you, I have, I've looked it all over. And I know anyone that's listening to this is like, holy crap. Yeah, there's holes in policies. And if you ever wanna go over anything, let me know. Because I'm gonna tell you, I love a good challenge. I do, very much so. So we have a lot coming up with Nurses Against Violence Unite this year. So I've already mentioned, I got the cat out of the bag talking about some recovery groups that we're gonna talk you know, and have some uh, identity being shielded. So you are not going to, there's always a chance depending on subpoenas and blah, blah, blah. But for the most part, nobody's gonna know who each other is except for I might know. It was probably a good idea for me to know who's in the group. So this way I can reach out to them after the fact and continue a conversation if there's something wrong. Um, these would be free. OK, these will be free. This will be a service that I do amongst many things with Nurses Against Violence Unite, because that's what is necessary. That is what I do. With that being said, to take whatever information and whatever things that you learn to your floor, to your floor, to the others that you work with. I will be launching Forensic Nurse Academy, which you guys kind of hinted, you know, seen a little hints about that here and there. Some of you have heard me talk about it. And I might be joining up with a couple people that are gonna help advocate for you on a legal level. I wanna know if anyone thinks that that's a great idea. You need to know your rights. And every single one of us is a forensic nurse. We, we gather samples, we help out building a case for the patient and sometimes to show our case of why somebody needs to have medication. Why somebody, if they're hurting other people, if they're cutting themselves or if they're doing something like injecting in the bathroom, why are we not charting that? So these are things that we will talk about with the Forensic Nurse Academy. So I want you to know I have been working tirelessly <laughs> to get through my program. Finally passing my boards, it has been nonstop. Going from empty nest syndrome to just trying to get it right. But I want you to know with everything that I've done, it has been for those that I care about. And you're it, you, my family, because we have the capability of changing and overhauling healthcare. It is in pieces. And every single one of you that decides that enough's enough and walks away, I want you to listen to this video. I want you to listen to how strong you are. Because I'm on the floor still working as an RN. I don't want to stay away from my patients, but it's time for me to move on into my nurse practitioner role so I can help people on a different level. That being every one of us specializing in nurses and frontline healthcare workers and the things that we go through. Do you deserve that? Absolutely, you do. We all do. We all need a wing person. I hope you know that I could be there for you. I'm not perfect, but I will be there for you. I want to also make an announcement. So a lot of people we work with have addiction problems, you know, have, you know, alcohol, have drug, nurses have alcohol and drug problems. 
We also have doctors, we have lawyers, we have all kinds of people that have addiction problems that come in and we just can't figure out what exactly is wrong with them. Have we ran any kind of labs? We can talk about that another time, but the labs that are very important, I mean, their alcohol level, you know, their liver function test, what is going on with our patient? What's going on with us when we become too hard to want to even listen? When can we decide that we're going to go according to a protocol and say, you know what, doc, I think this person might be withdrawing. You don't have to give meds, you know, as far as like prescribing anything. But if you have that insight in your health assessment, you will be able to prevent somebody from getting hurt, including yourself. So there's a webinar this Friday. I would like to, I'm going to put it in the, the comments um, that I'm going to participate in. Something that I'm going to divulge that's pretty personal um, on a different level. I'm taking Nurses Against Violence Unite and I'm, I'm going outside of nursing to talk about the problems that we have been facing just like I did with the doctors and other platforms. Why? Because not only it's necessary, but we have a lot of people to talk to about you know, addiction. We have a lot of people that in our profession that we, we haven't even touched yet. And that's important because one person leads to another person. If we can have this trickling effect with our profession without a handout, without saying, hey, in order for me to tell you what's going on, I need money from you. Hey, if you want to donate, great. I need the money to be able to promote more, right? So yes, if you want to donate to Nurses Against Violence Unite, I'll get a bigger, uh, we'll be able to get a bigger platform and I can promote us more. You know, it's very important. Instead, I've been using my money. So, and that's not good business, guys. That's not good business, but it's the passion that is overstepping the business and we need to start working on that. So we'll have some fundraising events and we'll also have some fundraising items that I hope you take a look at and maybe like and purchase and we'll get a portion of that to help us with getting more t-shirts, being able to have contests and also to be able to hand out to those that really do need and try to give something to those that really need an uplift. So I'm finding that a lot of um, administrators really are not connected to what's happening with their staff. And that is therefore the reason why a lot of people are leaving. So I've said a lot and I don't see anybody else. I haven't seen anybody that said anything. So hopefully these things are resonating with my group out there. If this seems like something that you need to pass on to your friends, to your family members, that your husband or wife is not listening to you about the problems that are happening in healthcare, I invite you to look at our past webinars, if not listening to this one, have them listen and just be quiet and let them, let them hear and absorb. Just ask them, could you please, could you please just listen? Because we have more assaults, there are more assaults on healthcare staff than there is any other profession. And that is documented with the uh, Bureau of Labor Statistics, Statistics, I think that's the right thing. Um, the Job Labor Board, you can look, up, look it up yourself. Workplace violence, especially in healthcare is on the rise and it has been for many years. And it is time for that to change. So I want to join you as we close out this webinar, I would like you to join me with saying enough's enough. Enough's enough, no more assaults, no more bad feelings, no more incivility in the workplace. Instead, have a conversation. What can we, we could talk to ourselves, yes, just you know, maybe don't answer. Talk to yourself, what can I do better? And in return, you know, you can, can, you can talk to the person and ask them, hey, Sally, I know that you didn't, you, you came off a little bit different. Can we have a conversation? Because I really, I really value our, our work relationship. Sometimes just kind of putting the ugly out there and just saying, you know, I think we just need to have a conversation because I think 
we're kind of like going like parallel. We're not really working as a team. If you're an administrator, I invite you to start caring more physically about your work environment. Maybe help answer call lights. Maybe get in the thick of it with them. Ask them if they need any help and help them not just walk away. We need unity more than anything right now. We need people that are listening. Because if nobody is going to listen, how are you going to fix anything? The future of nursing and healthcare is scary. And it is us that has to decide what we're gonna do about it. So join me and learn and enjoy your right as an advocate. And it could be your release as it is mine. And I haven't done it too much lately but I've got to scream on some cars. I got to get on a platform. I got to start talking more because we have other nurses we have not even, that don't even know about us yet. So please join me. I'm Dr. Sandy, and it has been my pleasure to be on this webinar with you today. Thank you and happy new year and many years to come. Goodbye.